Hey guys, welcome back to Chris the Freelancer Masterclasses. It's been almost a year since uh, the last masterclass, but um, it's not every day that you bump into experts around making money online, traveling, that kind of stuff. But uh, I've got Matt Cohn here today, former freelancer, now uh, agency owner. He's developed a system. Yeah, I'll pass it on to you to sort of explain more about how it works. Awesome, yeah, so basically, uh, at the beginning of this year, about 10 months ago, I was like a burnt out, broke freelancer, and just kind of trading my time for money. I couldn't build a scalable business because my time was associated with the money that I got, my income. Um, and so since then, I was able to hire a business coach, learn from people a lot smarter than myself, um, and build a thriving digital agency. Um, and now I'm running Different Hunger Media, which is a, a millennial targeted media brand to help Millennials, frustrated millennials, you know, ditch the traditional nine to five and, and build uh, a career lifestyle that they're, you know, proud of. Nice. Okay, great. So um, let's get straight into the masterclass. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to stop trading your time for money and build a scalable 10K plus per month digital agency. Um, those were supposed to be emojis, but that's what happens sometimes. <laughs> Um, so basically my goals with this masterclass provide you a proven system that I've used as well as others um, to build a 10k plus monthly income and scalable business that doesn't require your time and you know empower you to work less while making at least two three x what you're making now um, and really you know everybody wants to make more money but the people that I really love to help are the ones that you know want to build a legacy and positively impact people um, and if that's you awesome even if it's not this is going to work. <laughs> um, so specifically what that means. Um, I'm going to show you how to, to audit your daily tasks and actually calculate your daily value in order to maximize your time and ensure that you're actually spending time on things that are going to grow your business. Um, next, which is super, super important, uh, how to kind of rewire your thought patterns, your belief systems to actually make the transformation that you're looking to make because... Uh, you know, you're not just trying to make more money, you're trying to change your identity from where you're at now and where you want to go. And so I'll, I'll help you kind of do that. Next, uh, how to make the competition irrelevant and charge 2x what you are now. So I'll go through a kind of crash course in premium positioning and pricing. And then lastly, how to create the operational structure that you need to stop trading time for money and scale your business. And I've also prepared a worksheet so that you can download and implement everything that I'll be covering today. And again, those are the weird looking ghost emojis. Okay, cool. So it's for people that um, are sort of already providing a service, but they uh, want to sort of expand and uh, the next possible, uh, the next, I guess, uh, step that makes sense is to is to start uh, outsourcing and scaling and sort of seeing uh, how you can actually go from freelancer to a business, right? right. Yeah, and um, I do also have a few slides on how to get clients. Uh, so this will still be relevant to you if you are looking to start a business, um, and you'll be able to kind of shortcut a lot of the problems that most rookies have and that I went through. Um, so it'll still be helpful for you if you don't even have any clients right now. So the lessons are first, we're gonna cover your foundation. So this is around mindset and vision and, and habits. Uh, then we're going to go into premium positioning and pricing, and then systems and scaling. So once you create the structure that you need to leverage and, and start hiring out, and also, again, some sales tactics to start getting some more clients. Lesson one. So that's a cool picture. It's looking out on the hills of Hardeen in Colombia with my girlfriend. It's pretty cool. All right, anyways. So what we're going to cover is understanding value and leverage. Next, calculating your daily value rewiring your mindset to make your success inevitable. And so let's dive in. So you're probably seeing people on social media and your newsfeed, random advertisements, you know, sitting by a poolside making 10K per month. And, you know, some of those people are bullshitters, but some of those people are actually growing a, an awesome business. And, you know, the fact is they're not smarter than you. They're not, they're not working harder than you. It's just that they understand value. They understand that Time is limited, and to maximize your results, you need to spend that time on things that bring value to your business. So 
value is created by leverage, and leverage means more time or more money. And in a perfect world, which is what we're all looking for, you know, that paradise, um, your goal is to fill up your entire schedule with tasks that create leverage. Again, tasks that create either more time or more money. All right, so that's really important for you to understand. Um, and now we're going to dive into more like actionable tactics. So you need to make a habit of tracking your time, right? You know, if, if you're here and you want to go there, you, you got to do something differently, and this is a great place to start. If you're not tracking your time already, you need to, because that's how you improve. You have to understand where you're at and where you want to go. So at the end of your day, you want to schedule 20 minutes or so to audit your tasks and, and you know, dive into this exercise. And then what you're going to do is you're going to assign actual dollar amounts to each task, okay? So there's going to be $10 an hour tasks, there's going to be 50 dollar an hour tasks, 250 and $1,000. And how good timing is that toggle reminding you to track your yeah, time? <laughs> exactly. You know, I got to practice what I preach, right? Yeah. All right. So uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to calculate the value that you generated that day. And guys, this single exercise is going to change your life because it's going to help you become sensitive to the things that are wasting time and the things that are bringing in results. And I can't stress how amazing this exercise is. Um, and then you're going to be able to calculate the total value that you generated that day. So if your goal is $10,000 per month, you want to break that down, right? You want to break that down to weeks, so that's $2,500 per week. And then you want to break that down by the number of days that you're working per week. And so breaking that down, each day you should be generating at least $500. And again, this is not actual money in the bank but you are assigning dollar amounts to those values so that you're able to actually concretely understand uh, whether your tasks are, are driving value. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Um, this is included on the spreadsheet or the uh, worksheet that you guys can download, um, but this is just to visualize it. And so basically there's a formula tied to how to calculate the value. Um, and guys, again, doing this every single day, it, it's like shining, it's like taking a magnifying glass into your life and like, uh, like forcing you uh, to think and be aware of how you're spending your time so you can improve. And the, the value bucket is that kind of the expected ROI of, of what your, that task is going to do? Yeah, so basic, basically like there's low value tasks, there's high value tasks. Low value tasks are things that you should outsource immediately to like a virtual assistant. Um, that's going to be like replying to email, you know, social media graphic design. Um, client edits and revisions, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, there's top level value tasks, which are like creating new products, uh, establishing um, new partnerships and new markets, sales strategy, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it's, a, it's more of an arbitrary number that you kind of decide on, yeah, like a thousand, the value bucket here of a thousand mm -hmm. means that that's, that's 10 times more valuable than that one before right. it of of well, 100 times more valuable than one before it, right. of 10. Yeah, and again, it's all about leverage. So the higher value tasks have the most leverage, right? Yeah. Um, and then the lower value tasks are things that you need to automate, systemize, and get off your plate. Okay. Um, and then th this is just another guide that you guys can look at. Screenshot this, super helpful. Um, and it kind of goes through the breakdown of what those tasks look like. All right, so the last one, probably the most important, Rewiring your mindset for inevitable success. That's a bold claim, I know, but we'll back it up. We'll back it up. <laughs> um, so the thing with achieving your goals, 99% of people don't. That's, don't fact check me. That's just my estimate. Um, but it's never a matter of motivation. Or Sorry, it's never a matter of ability. It's a matter of motivation. Mm -hmm. Your goals have to inspire you. They have to light a fire under your ass. Otherwise, you're just like, who cares? There's, there's so many other distractions um, you need to be super specific with your goals. Um, so basically what you're going to do, and I have, a, again, a worksheet that you can use for this, uh, th write three business goals and three personal goals for the upcoming quarter. Your goals need to be highly specific, measurable with numbers or metrics, and attached to a specific due date. So do this every quarter, um, and there's three months in a quarter, so you should probably set the due dates at the end of each month of the, uh, the, of the quarter. So that's kind of how it will break down. And then for each goal, you're going to write two to, three two to three lines explaining why you chose those goals and why it's aligned with your vision. Again, we are tying our daily actions to something greater than ourselves. We're tying it to our identity of the person that we want to become. 
and this is super, super motivating transformational. Um, and again, this is including the worksheet, but this is the kind of structure that you're going to follow. And this is super, super important. Once you have this documented, um, you're going to review this first thing in the morning every single day. And it's going to program you to, it's going to like reprogram your kind of subconscious to align your actions again with your goals um, as if it's already happened. And this is amazing, an amazing um, exercise that I've used with myself, with clients, whoever. Um, and it's truly transformational. So just, just do it. I'm not going to keep selling it, selling it to you, but uh, it's, it's really awesome. All right, so now we're going to dive into premium positioning and pricing. So what we're going to do, we're going to understand what red oceans are um, and blue oceans. And, and if you're familiar with the book, Blue Ocean Strategy, um, then you'll know this concept. If not, no worries, I'll explain it. Next, uh, we're going to break down what premium and luxury is versus convenience and all purpose. And you guys obviously want to be premium and luxury and we'll, we'll, under, we'll break down how that applies to positioning. Um, lat, thirdly, uh, the importance of intimately understanding your market. This is the secret sauce. Um, you know, this is how you're able to charge premium prices. When you deeply, deeply understand the psychology of your customers and you know what they want and you know how you can provide a solution to them, that is the secret. And it's also a much more rewarding experience that way. Um, and then also how to price and package your services. All right, so most of you are, uh, most freelancers and business owners, they're sailing on red oceans, okay? That, they look a lot like this. Um, it's treacherous and it's just a race to the bottom. These are places like Upwork, you know, where you search for a web designer and you see a hundred million thousand results and everybody's just, you know, charging. It's, it's just a race to the bottom. That's not where you want to be. You want to be here. You want to be on the blue ocean where you are the only option in the eyes of your customer. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll break down what that looks like. So this is what most businesses, freelancers, consultants, whatever, um, look like. Most of them have near infinite competitors. They're trying to sell every product and service to every type of customer and Shocker, nobody wants to buy from them because they're generalists, you know, they're not specialists. So compare that to an Apple, a Prada, a Tesla, you know, a premium brand that demands premium prices, you know, look at this nice laptop. Um, that's what premium positioning does for you, you know, it creates an experience in the eyes of your customer um, and you, you, you learn that you just never want to be thrift, convenience or all purpose because if you appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one and that's not a good place to be in. Mm -hmm. So the question that you're probably asking is, how do you achieve luxury or premium positioning? And the answer to that is you need to deeply understand the secret treasure of your market. And the secret treasure is just the hopes, fears, and desires of your market. And guys, there's no shortcut to this. You know, this, this could take five sales calls, it, it could take 50 sales calls, it could take a month or a year, you know, you need to deeply understand your market because when you have a finger on the pulse of your audience and you're genuinely trying to help them and serve them, you're, you're going to be in business forever because you understand what they want and you understand how to provide a solution uh, to their needs. So when, when you do that, you don't need to educate your market about the value of what you're providing. If, if you're a freelancer or a business owner and you've been on the phone and they're like, ah, oh, well, why can't I just go with this guy down the street who's charging me $100 less? That means that you don't have premium positioning because you don't deeply understand the psychology of your customer. And that's not where you want to be again. So an example, podcasters and thought leaders, okay? So Lewis Howes, Jordan Harbin Harbinger, um, if you're not familiar, these guys have millions and millions of downloads to this podcast, multi-million dollar businesses. And so what a lot of people sell Again, the people that don't have premium positioning, they sell fool's gold. So they think that these podcasters and thought leaders want to repurpose content. So I'm a digital agency. Okay, we're going to repurpose your content. Okay, we're going to drive more traffic. Okay, we're going to help you build your brand. But that's not their secret treasure. That's, that's just what you think they want. But when you get on the phone with these people and you do your research and you have conversations you understand that they want to scale one-on-one -on -one engagement with their brand without spending any extra time. 
And I'm using this example. This is someone that uh, one of our customers used this model, and he's just killing it because he was able to research and, and perform that secret treasure uh, burial discovery um, to understand what his market wants. So what he did to establish his blue ocean was he called himself the Quora Growth Specialist, and he has a content repurposing agency. This guy in particular was experienced with Quora. So, um, and this guy's just absolutely killing it because he, he sends out emails to these people and they're like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Like how much, when can we get started? You know, because it's, it's what these guys want and you, and you can't replace, you know, intimate one-on-one -on -one conversations. Yeah. Um, another example, which is just very obscure, stairlift installation contractors. <laughs> yeah. So um, my grandma has one of these. Maybe your grandma has one of these. Um, but there's... This is a business, you know, they're contractors, and um, you think that they want digital marketing, you think that they want AdWords and landing pages and leads, um, but something that uh, my business partner, Ian, this is actually his agency, um, what he discovered after those calls, the secret treasure, is that they want red hot, high quality stair lift leads, because previous agencies in the past had been delivering shitty leads. Mm -hmm. So they don't want leads. They, they only want high quality leads that are gonna convert, right? So that's yeah. a lot different than this fool's gold that I've broken down for you here. Yeah. So if you're selling them like, we can get you thousands of leads, they'll be like, oh, but if you can say, we'll get you premium leads, right. you know, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. Exactly. And I guess, do you, um, uh, do you, you get into conversations with your clients, with prospective clients and then, uh, kind of ask them certain questions to figure out these secret treasures or is it uh, online research or yeah so there, that's a really good question and you know there's again there's no replacement to one-on-one -on -one conversations like what we're doing here um, so yes you're gonna do it on sales calls and, and you're gonna you know you just be like you, you're not gonna be a traditional salesman you're gonna say you know tell me you know mr. stairlift contractor like what's the biggest pain in the ass that you're you know, going through right now in your business? And, and you know, they're going to go on and you're going to say, okay, tell me a little bit more about that. You know, d dive deeper, right? You know, some people don't give it all away on the first you know, question. You got to kind of build that rapport and get to know them. Um, but at the same time, if, if you're on the phone with someone else and you're asking these like kind of personal questions in a genuine way, they're going to be like, whoa, wow, this guy actually cares, you know? Yeah. Um, but also, Quora is a great place. Um, Googling, you know, there's so much information out there. You, you can definitely find some, some solid initial research, which you should probably outsource to a VA. Um, but, uh, but yeah, those, so those are a few different ways. Okay. So would you say like knowing your, your target market and audience is like the main thing and then everything else just becomes easier, right? Yeah, because basically when you know your customer deeply, no matter what, like no matter if the kind of stock market crashes or there's a, a bubble bursting, whatever, you know, you understand your customer's psychology, right? You're going to be able to help them in whatever situation that they're in. And it helps you be more flexible in the marketplace uh, as a business. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have that intimate understanding, then you're just like everyone else, right? Yeah. You're just like every other guy in Upwork or um, every other designer, developer, whatever. Yeah, this is kind of your... Knowing their secret treasure is your secret source, maybe. Exactly. I just came up with that thing. There you go. <laughs> your secret sauce is there. What is it? Your, the, finding their secret treasure is your secret source. There we go. There we go. You feel free to use that. Trade market. <laughs> Trade market. Um, and so basically, just going back to this example really quick, um, John and Ian, who were running this business, they, they called themselves the stairlift acquisition experts and they're running a stairlift acquisition agency. And these guys within two months are on track to do like 10K MRR because they're just like these guys on the phone, they've never heard this before. It's just a yeah. completely unique approach because it's an underserved niche market. Wow. So yeah. Um, so how to price and package your services. Um, this is really helpful because a lot of people have questions around this and so basically what you want to do is you want to have three offerings, a kind of you know, high, medium, low. And this is because when consumers have too many options, they're, li they're less likely to choose one. And this is, this, this is psychology, this is research. Barry Schwartz, he wrote um, the, orth the Paradox of Choice. It's a really fascinating read. But um, 
basically when people have so many options and you're that you're that convenience store, you know, they're overwhelmed and they don't make a choice. Yeah. Um, so most people will choose the middle option, and there's tons of research on this. Um, it's pretty fascinating stuff, but basically nobody wants to, to become the cheap customer or spend too much money, so that's why they usually choose the, the, the happy medium, but um, position your packages and services in, in this manner, and it'll really help your customers more easily digest how you can provide a solution to them. Um, also, retainers, not projects, are the best engine fuel for your business, um, and that's because it forces you to find a way to deliver value on an ongoing basis. Um, retainers are great because they force you to find a way to provide massive value to your clients. And look, I mean, at the end of the day, the most sustainable business is one that genuinely helps people and, and improves their lives. So um, again, retainers, they increase customer lifetime value because you, know, you get a client at 2K per month every month, and then you can sell them projects, you know, upsells and, and uh, you know, more intimate services. Um, and it also minimizes revenue fluctuation. So if you're listening to this um, and, you know, even if you're just getting started as a freelancer or you've been doing it for a while, I know it's a pain in the ass to have that revenue fluctuation. You know, one month you're doing five, 5K, the next month you're doing 1K and you're like, well, what the hell? And that's because... You don't have these retainers and this foundation in place um, that, that minimizes that fluctuation. So this is really important as you're just getting started. And again, they're making sure that you're providing an, uh, an essential service and an essential component of their business. And you're not just selling fool's gold, right? You're selling something that's genuinely valuable. Um, so lastly, we are going to cover systems and scaling. There's that picture again. It looks nice. All right. So we're going to cover why systemization provides ultimate freedom. And if you're listening and you're like, what the hell is systemization? That sounds like some bullshit. <laughs> it's not. I'll break it down. Uh, no worries. How to actually begin systemizing your business so that you can start scaling, you can start hiring, you can start hanging out with Chris in all of his cool locations around the world <laughs> and uh, taking cool Instagram pictures and stuff. Or changing the world, whatever, you know, whatever works. And then uh, also we're going to cover some outreach and sales strategies to fill up your pipeline. All right, so why, is system, why systemization is absolutely essential. So systemization is the secret to scale and freedom because without these systems, you're continually reinventing the wheel over and over and over again, and you're wasting time and energy and resources that you do not have to waste. I mean, if you're making a few thousand dollars um, per month and trying to scale that, you don't want to be fucking around with stuff that you can systemize and delegate and automate so that you can focus on growing the business. Um, when you have these systems, you can scale, you can eliminate overwhelm because you know things are accounted for, and you can spend time on the business, on the strategy, on the vision, and not in the business with client revisions and communications and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So here's how you create systems and this is what I mean when I'm referring to systems. So basically all tasks and projects have a starting point, point A, point B. You need to define both when you're creating your system. So let's say I'm a web designer and I deliver websites. So point A is client pays me for a website. Point B is I deliver that project and the client calls their wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever and is just screaming because the website is so damn good and they want to hire you immediately for more work. I got a little carried away, but you understand. So from point A to point B, there's milestones that occur. So you want to document these in just a bulleted list. So it's going to be something like, um, you know, client payment received, build the project specs, you know, build the, the design concept, hand it over to developers, yada, yada, yada. Then review those milestones and group them into phases. So for web design in particular, there's, you know, there's a discovery process. Um, there's going to be a pre-design process, there's going to be a design process and development and launch, whatever. Customize it based on what you're, what, you're pro blah, 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 what you're providing. So now that you've created the structure for your system, this is the most important part, you need to add granular details and specific instructions so that you can go from point A to point B. Or point A to point B. I think I started with the wrong hands, but who cares. Um, <laughs> creating a very kind of detailed, comprehensive checklist of sorts. And then, you know, you're going to refine and iterate. And a great way to test this is the five-year-old test. So 
again, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you want to be able to hand this system over and say, hey, Chris, Mr. Uh, highly Intelligent Five-Year-Old, yeah. um, go through this system and you know, deliver this work back to me. Yeah. And so after going th through that enough times, you'll be able to have something that delivers the product that you're looking for, but it needs to be mapped out so clearly that a five-year-old can understand. Yeah. I had a conversation with a friend last night and how he systemized his business mm -hmm. and he, he took the system uh, back to his family just to show them. He didn't want to hire them or whatever and they all volunteered to do the job because it was so clear. Yeah. And I guess that's the power of, of having a system. If you can give it to somebody and they understand it straight away, you've done well, I think. Yep, exactly. And, and you know, like with anything, the more you do this, the better you'll get. And uh, for a lot of people, it's kind of like icky and like uncomfortable and, um, and all that stuff. But like, if you want to see different results, you got to change how, what you're doing. So yeah. overcome that resistance. Understand that most people don't put in this type of work. You know, most people don't systemize, but most people don't achieve what you're trying to achieve. So it's really that simple. Um, and so as far as actually systemizing your business, here's a kind of uh, walk through. So you want to start first with the most important service or services, whatever that you're providing, the ones that are making money, because it doesn't make sense to systemize um, payment processing if while you're doing that, you're not getting clients and then you're you know, going broke. Like, that doesn't make sense. So prioritize the money makers. So next, again, tracking your time, super important. Um, you want to track your time so that you're able to start identifying what items need to be systemized. So keep a running list of all recurring tasks that you perform on a daily basis. Evernote's fine, but whatever you do, just keep it in one location so that you're able to start building up a list and understand, all right, I need to systemize this, I need to systemize this. Again, prioritizing the money makers. And then when you're getting started with this, you wanna block out at least, at least two to four hours per week on your schedule to document these systems and so go do this right now. I'll wait. All right, just kidding. I won't wait. So here's kind of a breakdown of the essential systems that you'll need for your business. I'm not going to dive into these. It's just really helpful. So screenshot this, whatever. Um, operating systems. And basically that's, you know, website design, social media marketing, point A to point B. You know, what is that process that I have to follow? Client onboarding, internal job assignment. That's more when you have a team, of course. Um, client requests contractor team member onboarding so once you start hiring what's that process look like payment processing you know how do you get paid that's pretty important i'd say right yeah <laughs> uh swipe copy this is um this is super helpful because you want to uh for example every time a client pays there's probably the same email that you're going to send back so put that into a system put that into a template and have your team just deliver a copy paste super simple and then projects operations dashboards um, you're going to need a process for how to manage that. And you can see Toggle won't leave me alone. Um, and whether you're making $1 a month, $10,000, $100,000 per month, your systems are always going to be iterating. And it's really important that you understand that just by going through this process that I've walked you through, you're separating yourself from most business owners. And you're, you're going to, I know some of you, because I did this too. A lot of you guys are going to be like, well, it's not good enough or it's not perfect. Of course it's not perfect. You're just getting started. It's a new task. But it's going to leave you in a much better position to just have some structure versus no structure. So just keep that in mind and just focus on making progress. And I guess having the system as well is, is something you can put in your packages. So on the marketing side as well, because um, there's that whole um, idea of productized services that... Um, that the client wants to know exactly what they're getting, right? right? And then you have like, this package includes all this. When, when you mentioned the three different packages, I'm just seeing like, it's, you see it on a lot of service-based websites where you go down the bottom and there's that table with the, yeah. with the dot points and then the three different options and right. the, the middle one's the bigger box yeah, and yeah. all that. So having the system plays into that, right? Right, definitely. Yeah. And keep in mind, having processes for all these, it'll take probably a few months, um, sometimes more, but again, some process is better than no process. Yeah. Um, and then these are just some strategies that you can use to get more clients. Um, I'm not gonna dive too deep into them, and this is kind of a, uh, this is a great sort of hustle approach. 
Um, if you're just getting started, if you're looking to get your first few clients, if you're looking to get your next few clients, um, this is a great way initially because as you progress as a business owner, you need to have a more systemized and predictable lead generation approach. This is definitely more of a hustle approach, like I said, um, but I, I wanted to make that distinction because it's important that you don't equate working more and, and doing more and logging more hours with making more money um, because if you think that way, there's a limit to your income, right? There's 24 hours in a day. Um, your brain can only process so much information and it's a, it's a dangerous place. It's uh, something that I talk about a lot and passionate about because it's really helpful for people to understand that you don't need to work like a freaking monster animal Gary V hustle maniac uh, to achieve massive results. So hustle in the beginning, but yeah. don't get caught in that exactly. mouse trap. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, I just screenshot this. I'm not going to dive too deeply into them, but they're definitely, these are all ways that I've personally used and clients of mine, customers of mine have used. Um, and this is included in your worksheet too. So it's not going anywhere. Um, and then this is, this is really just kind of like the strategy, um, the kind of foundational strategy of sorts. It's, you know, it, it works slowly, but it, over time you'll see results. Uh, so, you know, find out where your ideal clients are hanging out. It could be a Facebook group, it could be a blog, whatever. Create massively valuable content that makes them scream with joy, dance around, whatever. Um, you just need to find out where they hang out and get in front of them on a, on a larger scale than, you know, a few of your friends. Um, and you want to provide them with value. So make sure that piece of content has a conversion method. Uh, you know, grab their email, link to a Facebook group, whatever. Um, and at this point, you know, you've already provided value, so they're probably going to be curious to learn more. Um, and it just makes sense. Like, oh, hey, you like this? You want more? Check it out here. Um, and then just keep doing that because over time, that's going to translate to results and it's going to help you deliver a, or a former relationship. You know, Chris is continuously providing useful content around digital nomads, freelancers, and mm -hmm. he has 40,000 subscribers on YouTube, you know. It's uh, not, it, it's not uh, rocket science, but it's, it takes time and, you know, most people don't want to hear the uh, two, three-year strategy to see massive results. Sometimes it doesn't take that long, but just kind of proving my point, I guess. And then again, you're just going to craft offers based on what your audience needs. It goes back to that secret treasure that we talked about earlier, you know. You just want to form relationships, right? I mean, you get into business to help people change lives and, and why not get to know your customers on a deep level? You know, you don't want to be up in some ivory tower uh, where they have to, you know, send a carrier pigeon up with a note because um, that's like douchey. Who does that, right? But, um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So um, thank you guys for listening to this master class. It's time to level up that income, that business, and that lifestyle. Um, and again... What I've included in the resources worksheet is a daily value calculator. It'll have that spreadsheet with a formula that I shared. Um, your blue ocean niche definition worksheet. And a step-by-step -step guide to hiring your first VA. All right, so you can grab that at this URL, differenthunger.com, CTF Masterclass. And if you're uh, just a freelancer. And if you're lazy, you can just click the first link in the description as well. Um, yeah, or go to that link in your browser. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much the masterclass and, um, you've been doing this, uh, you've had this system and been working with people for how long now? Yeah. Well, so it's been a long journey. Um, I started different hunger initially as like a personal blog when I was a college kid and I was like seeing people like Chris on, on online and I was like, okay, I'm not ever working a desk job. <laughs> um, and I'm going to figure out how to build, you know, a business that provides me with freedom and, and helps and, you know, reaches a lot of people. Um, but it wasn't, I didn't release a product for like three years after because I was trying to build a, a career. Um, and I got started as a freelance designer. Um, I did take a desk job and, and then I ended up quitting a year and a half later um, because I, I just realized it was too, like, you know, life's too short to just do that. Um, and now uh, I've, I was able to scale from a freelance designer to a design agency. Um, and then I've combined basically the blog with the agency to form a sort of media company for millennials. And now we create uh, programs, products, uh, content, really good content. So check us out. Um, 
but yeah, that's kind of the journey. It's been a little bit up and down, but it's been fun and um, it's awesome to be able to help people with this kind of stuff because I know what it's like to be really talented. Not saying I was talented, but I see a lot of people um, that are super, super talented, but they can't make more money because they don't have this sort of knowledge around systems and structure and scalability and value and leverage, that kind of yeah. stuff. Absolutely. No, that's awesome. If you guys want to check out those resources, uh, first link in the description, or if you have that link from before, you can put that right into your browser. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, Matt, awesome, and man. sharing. My pleasure. Yeah. See you guys in paradise. Where? <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next video. Catch you later.